Hey everybody, Skylar here, um, in my home this time instead of my office. So, this lock modification, I actually first got the idea from a member of lockpicking101.com named Unbreakable. Um, he actually just made an idle comment about having seen this sort of system in place in a storefront, I think. Uh, and I decided I would try to figure out how it worked and how it was done. It was actually one of the first big contributions that I made to um, LockPicking101.com and the Locksport community as a whole. And it's one of my favorites. I haven't done it again uh, probably in three years. So here it is. It's plug modification. We're actually going to change the internals of the lock so that one key will lock it and another key will unlock it. But neither can do the other job. Um, here's how it works. Okay, so we have our normal kick cylinder here with two keys. Excellent, they work great. Uh, and you'll see that presently they work in both directions. So I'm just going to pull the cylinder apart and we're going to get right to it. As always, I use my cylinder cap to hold that little pin and spring there so we don't lose track of it. Key into the lock. Plug follower so that we don't drop the pins in the Bible here because we're not even going to touch those. And we have our Bible with our pins. Now we're going to go ahead and modify the, uh, the fifth and the third chambers here. And I'll show you exactly what we're doing to that, but first let's unload this. Into our paper pinning tray. Always handy and super affordable. Oops. Two. I didn't think to bring the tweezers this time around, which is pretty annoying. That's also three and four. And five. Okay, I'm just going to set those out of the way. I'm not too worried about them. Now, the whole point of this of this uh, modification is that we want one key to close the lock and another key to open the lock. To do that, we're going to remove a little bit of material right along here, and a little bit of material on the opposite side right along here. So. I just use a little half round file to get started. And I have a few other files that I'm going to use to remove material along the way because I want it to be a nice open chamber. Um, and I'll just go ahead. So, you can see what I've done here. See that material removed from the third chamber? And then when we turn it around on the other side, material removed from the fifth chamber. As we reload each of the pins, one, two, three, four, five, six, as we reload each of the pins, I'm going to show you how the normal key operates it. It still lifts everything flush to the shear line, but you can see that on this one, your key pin would actually collide here. And same story over here, your key pin could collide, which isn't what we're into. What we really want is to modify these keys now to correspond with the cuts. You can see that this one has had some material removed from the third position. You can see it's a bit flatter there now and a bit deeper. The effect this has is to place that pin deeper in the lock and provide a wall So that this time, this key will only be able to turn K1 
counterclockwise because the key pin will be able to will be able to release itself or the driver pin will be able to release itself along that ramp but it will not be able to turn to the left because it will catch on that wall now we're going to modify this key to have the same effect on the other side so right now it pushes it up flush we don't want that we're just going to take one of our files here and remove some material from this. Alright, okay. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let's have a look at the differences in the keys again. So, you can see that that stack's a little bit different. And if we flip them around here, oh yeah, that's nice. You can see that those guys are a little different too. Excellent. Okay. So, let's see where this leaves that pin. Nice. Nice. That's nice and flush now. Look at that ramp leading up into it. I think this will work. Alright, we're going to install it in the lock. Okay. And before we go screwing around, I'm going to put the cylinder cap back on here. Always want it to be perfectly assembled. Nice. This is actually just a little street super bristle I'm using to screw the cap down. Just happen to have it. Laying around worked pretty well. Okay, moment of truth. This one should move us only clockwise. Oh, it does turn clockwise. All right, and does it turn counter? No. No, it doesn't. I can't turn counter at all. It turns really smoothly clockwise. So this one could lock our door, but it could not ever unlock it. Awesome. And our other key, right here, Whew, should only turn counter. Alright, turns counter pretty well. It's got a little catch, but that's not so bad. Counter, counter, counter. And now, it cannot turn clockwise. This key can only unlock the door. Depending on mounting, of course. Um, but those are the traditional directions. So, there you have it. Those little modifications of your cylinder, you now have one key that can lock the lock and one key that can unlock the lock. Um, and why you'd want that, there are a couple of reasons, and I'll probably explain those in the post, but there you go. Lock modification. There's your first mod. There's plenty else you can do.